Are you a business owner looking for real advice and input? You're in the right place. From concept to launch to growth, funding and beyond. Welcome to Startup Hustle with your hosts. One once sold a business for $150 million. The other, the author of Million Dollar Bedroom. Here are your hosts of Startup Hustle, Matt DeCourcy and Matt Watson. And we're back. Another episode of Startup Hustle. Matt DeCourcy here with Matt Watson. Hi, Matt. What's going on, man? Oh, just another day in quarantine, baby. Getting ready to work from home. How about you? Um, I'm trying to figure out what time I'm going to take a nap today while working from home. Well, it sounds to me like you might need some tips on how to be more productive in working from home. Whether that's true or not, it is the topic of today's episode. Everybody's doing it. Everybody that can. <laughs> you know, I I have worked from home in some capacity for almost 20 years. And I've learned a lot about working from home, including the fact that most people aren't very good at it. When When you say work from home, do you mean like you go to work and you work at work and then you come home and then you work some more? Uh, no, but I do that too. <laughs> uh, that that is that's not uncommon either yeah so uh, try to avoid that on some days but you know uh, working from home is something we all got forced into doing or at least you know most of us and it you know there there's a science to it that I, I think when I talk to people a lot of everyone says well I want to work from home and I'd be I do this and I do that and I'd be more productive and all these different things. And and I I think a lot of people are, and then some people are completely lost. And, you know, we, we might be a bit tardy in doing this episode, but, you know, with that, I think we can really kind of share some, some things. Now you, you had confided in me earlier that you had burnt yourself out working from home. Yeah. It's been tough. I think there's a lot of people that are having, you know, what they call quarantine fatigue and, and some of that is people that are working from home and, and people that, that maybe they aren't working at all. But either, either way, they're having, you know, that kind of quarantine fatigue. They're, they're sick of being locked up at home. Yeah, I think that that's definitely part of it. And I think that, you know, there's, I don't know, there's underlying stress and some other things that might not be present during a normal work from home environment. Um, I think in some situations, it depends on what you do. Like, Mm -hmm. what is your role? Like when I look at software developers, they might actually function better on a lot of days working from home than a busy office because there's not a level of distraction, interruption or noise. Well, and we're the lucky ones. I mean, what what are the, they've been talking about this on the news. I don't remember. Was it like 30 or 40% of Americans can work from home? You remember? That's it? Yeah, Me- I mean, meaning like meaning they have jobs that can be performed from yeah, home, or they yeah. okay, okay. I mean that yeah, that's a huge portion of the workforce, but that's, that's obviously not. It's still not the lion's share, though. Yeah, I mean we're the lucky ones. I mean I, I feel bad for you know the tens of millions of other people that you know they can't work in a restaurant, they can't go to the yeah. factory, they can't they can't you know they're salespeople that all of a sudden can't go meet other people in person, right? Like we're the lucky ones that get to work work from home, but it still has its struggles, like you said. And there are definitely certain people that do better working at home than others. Like I have a friend that's in sales and he's able to do his job working remotely, but he said it's way more difficult to sell anything. You just don't get the same. You just can't close a deal. I mean, you know, there's a reason they travel all over the country and sit down in front of their customer and negotiate and try and get a deal done, right? Like you just don't get the same effect doing those things remotely. But He's trying to do his best. I mean, we're all we're all struggling through this. Yeah, I think when in situations where you're on an even playing field, like, but here's the thing: is whoever he's competing with to get those sales, eh, they're working in the same. They're they're on the same field. It's not like, you know, now during normal times that mm, I, I can see that there can be definite disadvantages to people that might be in a work from home environment. Um, I, I think that as we go forward, a lot of people are going to be questioning and reevaluating their ability and need to go to an office every day or be there. But Absolutely. And, and this is a good time to remind everybody this episode is brought to you by Fullscale.io, where we have uh, almost a couple hundred employees in the Philippines that do software development. And 
the reason I mentioned that is we've been rethinking that a lot ourselves, right? Like, you know, up until now, we didn't really allow our employees to work remotely. That was not really a common practice, but now maybe it is, right? Yeah. And that's, and you know, there were a few reasons for that. And before we get into some of the tips on how to do better at that, I mean, some of the the advantages, you know, there's, there's an, there is an advantage to being in the same room as other people that you're working with. And there sometimes there's a disadvantage. And yep. and you know, for regular listeners, you've heard me say at some point that oftentimes your strength holds hands with your weakness and walks down the street together. So that in-person collaboration can be very powerful, but it can also be a distraction on some levels. You have that perpetual, like, uh, you know, that, that uh, water cooler where mm-hmm. people, you know, are kind of, you know, stuck around or, and, and then I think on some levels too, that, Um, you know, there's, everyone's worked with that person that always asks everyone else the question that they probably could have resolved in eight seconds with the use of Google. Yes. And, you know, those, those kind of distractions. Now I mentioned earlier, I, I, that I don't think that most people are successful working from home. Now I, I have been successful. Um, some of that has to do with the fact is my own personality. So I have a highly driven personality, but I've also got ADD. So, you know, my ability when I'm in the office and you, you know, you and I share an office when we are able to, you see, sometimes I just shut my door. I, you know, and I, I'll lock myself in my office because, um, I see people walking by people that they want to stop and talk and they want to do different things. And, you know, for, if you're easily distracted, I it just, it doesn't matter where you have ADD or not. Uh, it, you know, the statistics show that if you get distracted from what you're doing, it takes five or five to 10 minutes to refocus your, your energy. So, you know, I, I think that I, I'll start with the first tip. Uh, if you want to be successful working from home, you have to begin by creating some kind of routine. And, Mm -hmm. and with that comes a regular, regular schedule. And, you know, that's something that you and I have done well when it comes to the podcast, because we used to record the podcast. And for those of you that are are unaware, it's a daily thing. We do it at 1030 AM at Kansas city time. And we continued with that routine. Like we started today at 1030 and that sense of normalcy um, is helpful. Now, why is it helpful? Okay. Let's be realistic, man. When I'm working from home, if I wanted to, I could still be in bed right now. I still am. That, well, I just welcome. have my microphone in bed with me. I knew we shouldn't have, I knew we shouldn't have ordered that headset, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's the thing is, is the problem with working from home for a lot of people is that is where your the lion's share of your distractions live mm-hmm. your television, your couch, your stuff, things, lack of accountability. But, you know, and, and that's, that's where that struggle can begin. So you talk about creating a routine, like, have you created a routine or did you already have one? Um, I, you know, I think the other tip that goes into this is, is also having maybe a separate space to work. And for me, that's been the biggest change is I've always worked from home and at work. I just never stopped working, right? And I would work in my living room on my couch with my laptop. And now my routine that has changed is really having a separate space. So I'm actually using my office now, which is where I'm at right now while while doing this and working. And that is that has changed for me. I never used to actually come down to this room and actually use my office. It was the most underused room in my house. But now that is my new routine is I actually created a separate space. So I created a second space. So you mentioned that you you know you would sometimes work and you, you're there on the couch or whatever, but you had a full day at an office. Yep. And and you have an office at the office and also sometimes close your door for mm-hmm. the same reasons, but you know part of that routine. So I you know, I, I built a second office. So I had a on the the second level of my home have a uh, had an unused guest room, which is actually where I'm at right now. Now I needed to do that for a couple of reasons. One, the uh, the primary office space that we have it wasn't very good for recording podcasts. Also, it wasn't very good at keeping children out. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so you talk about that space, but these are all part of a routine. So now your routine is going to your defined office space. And, you know, d- with that, are you keeping regular hours? I try to, you know, I, I try to work till about five o'clock and then um, call it quits. And then sometimes I may work another hour or two later in the evening after the kids go to bed. But um, which has always been our routine, you know, when I'd go to work, I'd come home, spend time with my family, and then sometimes work another hour or something late at night. But yeah, I try to try to quit at five. Now, the other thing that's different, and and this is one of the advantages of not working in an office is there's no commute time. So, you know, that's, I don't work very far from, from my office, but for some of those that are listening that may have a 30 minute hour long commute to work and then 30 minute to an hour back, you just got a huge part of your day back. Like that's crazy. And that's more time you could spend working or that's more time you could spend with your family or exercising or whatever it is you want to do. But that's a big difference uh, in our, our daily routine as well. It's more time you could spend getting caught up on missed episodes of Startup Hustle. That's right. Yes. You know, it's it's uh, one of the things that's been interesting and not to get off track here, but podcast listenership has actually gone down mm-hmm. during quarantine. And I was curious whether it would go up or down. But, you know, it, the statistics show that that a lot of people listen to podcasts during their commute. You, you know what? You know what? Gone, yeah. up though, right? What? Watching porn has went up and podcasted. Probably. Went down. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> are you speaking from experience? Oh, I, I saw an article from Pornhub about it. What? Okay. I, I'm not even going to touch that. So now, <laughs> speaking of things you should or shouldn't do while working from home, uh, watching porn probably isn't on that list, but you have to, you know, you got to set some ground rules for yourself. And, you know, the ground rules, you know, I mentioned earlier that um, I, I built a secondary space that, uh, you know, the the space that I'm in right now, it doesn't have, the, so the other office space that I have, it has a glass door. Um, you can see in it, uh, it doesn't have curtains on it. My kids would see there, they'd come, they'd rattle the door, they'd come in and it's, and, and you know, I normally I have no problem with that. Now, if I'm recording a podcast or I'm in the middle of a, of a Zoom call or something like that, that can be really, uh, that can be really distracting. It can be negative. And, it can, and on some time, it, on some levels, it can be disrespectful, just meaning like, uh, you know, people are busy and then all of a sudden, you know, I don't know, you're like shooing away a kid or sometimes I let my, I've let my daughter sit in and, you know, it's just, it's, it's distracting, but basic ground rules. And that's uh, starts, you know, we've made some jokes in the past about uh, referring to your kids as your coworkers, Uh Yeah, but they are right now. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that uh, we talk about what can be your biggest distraction that easily has the ability to be the biggest distraction for me. Um, when it comes to just general noise, audio, um, stuff like that. So, um, you know, basic ground rules as well can, you know, so that's, what's been useful and where this secondary office helped because I kind of, I, I sneak up here for short amounts of time, well, short amounts, an hour or two and kind of just lock myself in this room. And that's just been kind of a signal for, Hey, daddy's working. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, you know, occasionally I'll be sitting here and I hear the doorknob wiggle just a little bit and the the kids realize they've learned that when that's locked, maybe come back a little later. Now, what, what do you have some, do you have some basic ground rules? I'm assuming you may have something similar with your kids or. Yeah, my, my kids have done a good job of knowing that when I am in my office and the door is closed to leave me alone. And it's funny, you know, I'll go down the hall you know, multiple times a day to get coffee or drink or have lunch or whatever. And the kids always ask me, they're like, dad, how many more calls do you have today? How many more calls? That's what they always ask me. (laughs) Well, my kids, they'll ask, they'll say, are you, are you done with your podcast? Cause they're during this time, I actually ask my wife to go down in the basement with the kids and they do their stuff down there. Cause you know, well, I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And if they start screaming, I, I don't really have a place. If they're one level away or on the same level, you're going to hear it. 
you're going to hear it in the mic. And I don't have an issue with that. It's just, you know, some, we've been trying to learn our own routines around here. And some of that is like homeschool stuff. Oh yeah. So, and then some of it too, is like I mentioned having a three-year-old and a five-year-old, like my daughter's learning how to ride a bike. So sometimes Jill will take them outside and do some different stuff. And, and, you know, that's, and that's helpful. Um, I, I just have really loud kids too. They're much like my, much like dad. Uh, but you know, some of those ground rules, you know, some other things too, that, that fall under the category of ground rules is, you know, if you're going to have a regular routine and re- keep regular hours, then it's normal to want to schedule breaks. Yes. So are, do you do that? Um, I don't take specific breaks, but I don't really schedule them, but I, I definitely, um, like I said, you know, I go down and get coffee, I'll go see the kids or whatever. And like when I have lunch, you know, I'm, I don't necessarily rush back to work after I finish my lunch. I, you know, try and be realistic and take a few minutes and hang out with the family. Yeah. I've, you know, so I've got a home gym. I I'll take a break and, and exercise a little bit. Now, one of the things is, uh, normally for a, a work from home tip, it would say occasionally leave home. Now yeah. that's a little more difficult than it would be. Um, but no, I've know, seriously I, done that though. I'm like, I'm going to Panera to go through the drive through because I just want to get the hell out of the house. The other day I woke up and it was, it was like, you know, around 8am and I just went and drove my car around for about 10 minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it was largely because I realized I hadn't started it in almost a month. Mm. and wanted to make sure it was still going to start. But I went and drove around and I started thinking, I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, leaving home, one of the things that I've started walking around my neighborhood. Yes. So, you know, that you hear a lot of people that have been, they say, oh, well, you have in college, you had the, the freshman 15 and then you have the quarantine 20. Um, I've gotten fatter. Have you? Um. You know, I have a little over the last year, and uh, it's partly because my wife is pregnant, and she says I was uh, waiting for you weight. to blame. blame. She says it's sympathy weight. At, um, she wants to have ice cream every single day, so that's not helping me very much. Well, you, and it's sa- same here, though. Like that's one of the things is working from home. Now y- you know I'm not a big lunch person, mm-hmm. but I'm like thirty feet away from my refrigerator. Yeah, so snack time. Yeah. So that's part of what I, you know, I, I, I joked earlier or in earlier episodes that I'm getting pretty close to being Kansas's strongest fat guy because I've been lifting weights, but I haven't been doing anything that's, you know, cardio related. So but you, you, know, you, I've men- been- you, you mentioned earlier about taking breaks. And I think there's one important thing that to mention in regards specifically to breaks is people even need to take breaks while they're on zoom calls or on video conferencing. You know, think about having a management meeting that's two hours long, right? And I have those every Monday afternoon. Normally, if I was in the office, if I need to go to the bathroom or get coffee, I would excuse myself. I would leave the room and I would come back five minutes later, right? You can still do that when you're on a video conference. And people need to do that. Like, just because you got to pee really bad and you're on a video call doesn't mean you can't go, right? And I think that's just a really basic thing that people just don't think about as a tip like if if you're in a really long conference call meeting take a break there's nothing wrong with it um when we had management meetings before we would have bio breaks for everybody right you can still do that even though you're doing a remote video call yeah i schedule everything so i think that people inherently schedule things in like 15 30 60 minute blocks Mm -hmm. i do i do 10 20 40 and part of that is actually the, the root of that is because, well, we you know to go to the bathroom it, every 40 minutes. No, it's actually because things usually take longer than you think they do. And if you end up with things booked back to back to back to back to back and you get f- 10, 15, 20 minutes behind, it's perilous. It's not it's not effective. It's like just overall like a really, you know not a great thing. Uh, but part of that is to just have like a little bit of, 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 of a break. Now, a lot of people have talked, you talked about that kind of fat- quarantine fatigue. Well, some people have had video call fatigue. Yes. And, you know, there's for some of us now, I, I'm not really included in that, in that mix, but some people just, you know, the whole act of talking, communicating and all that stuff is tiresome. Well, when you have somebody, 
in a in a physical one to one meeting, you don't stare them at the face the whole time, right? But when you're on a video call, you're like staring at your screen the whole time, and something about that causes more fatigue. Um, being on you know for hours a day, being on video calls, it's a different type of focus. It's and different. you know, like, so you can, if I'm in a room with someone and, and you know, here's the thing is theoretically you can do the same thing through a screen, but you know, when you're in a room with someone, you have that going on, you hear it in your ear, you can still do that with a video call, but it's, it requires that level. It, there's just a different, I don't know. We're kind of trained to look at the screen Yeah, and you know, that's what kind of breaks some things down. So, so, so one of it, the, one of the tips was to turn the video off. Okay. Like you, if you don't need video all the time, you don't necessarily have to have video on on every single call. Treat it more like a phone call. See, I don't like that though, and and the reason for that is you know we're sitting here, we're all locked in our homes, and I mean, here, okay, so I went and visited my dad on Saturday and realized that that was the first that that's the first human that I've actually sat in close proximity to for more than like moments in over a month. Mm -hmm. And you talk about some of that fatigue and that burnout and the things that, you know, the, you go back to what a normal routine was before I was used to seeing people. Um, I mean, honestly, man, I am, I am well equipped for quarantine, but I like, I like the, the, see the face that I like the video call nature of actually mm -hmm. seeing people. It feels more well, like a meeting. I think it's but, just when people so, do it for too many hours a day, it wears you down. Sure. Yeah. And that, but, but you can control that. You have to control that chaos. Mm -hmm. Like I said, rather than thinking of that 30, 60 minute, do 20 minute, 40 minute, you get these built in breaks. And then also, I think one of the things that I think a lot of people are probably um, learning a lot about time management when it comes to this, because, you know, you, you say, okay, I'm going to make this 60 minute call. And then someone schedules another call right after it, another call right after it. It's it's general time management. I, mean, I went through that. Uh, you remember it was probably a year ago. And I said, man, I'm, I'm finding that if I make a 30-minute meeting, they go 30 minutes or more. If I make a 60-minute meeting, it goes 60 minutes or more. Mm -hmm. So I, and that's when I said, I, said, I think I'm going to start doing 10, 20, 40. And I noticed that things like it was that predetermined amount of time and so, oh, well, it looks like we're out of time. And then the main thing was, is not putting that pressure on. Cause like, if you, if you go back to back to back to back to back with video calls or any kind of stuff like that, or any, even just regular phone calls, if you, like I said, if you get a few minutes behind, it starts, I think that's where people are getting stressed. I don't think it's the video calls themselves. I think it's probably the time management, but you know, and, and that's the whole thing. So if you're going to keep regular hours and you want to keep a routine, that means keep a schedule. I've kept a lot of that. Like I use Gigabook, use Google Calendar, use whatever you want. Schedule yourself blocks of time. You know, like I will literally put on my calendar working on mm -hmm. financial projections. And that's a good tip always. Like if, right. if you don't like I need to plan to do something, I'm going to block time off my calendar and make sure I do it. And then you have to actually do it then. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's the thing. So now yeah, I want to actually, I want to take a little sidebar here and I want to, so some people need the routine. Some people need the regularity. Now, in some cases you might be able to find an amazing amount of productivity if you actually release yourself from the routines and the regularity. Now this is only going to be a this is only going to be possible for a small percentage and number of people because not all of us, you know, you mentioned you have that 2 hour call that's on Mondays. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to be there. You got to be there. Now, if you see blocks of time open and available, um, it, you know, if I feel inspired and motivated to do something and I have a clear schedule ahead of me, then I get, I, I'll, I will chase whatever, whatever is calling me at that time. Now you still have to be disciplined enough to say, okay, this is not a high value activity, but if I feel like I suddenly have the clarity and focus to do task X, I will just rock right into that. And I will keep after it until I lose my focus on it. Like almost to the point that, 
I mean, it could be a little obsessive or you're like, okay, I need to take a break. The problem is, is when you take a break, sometimes you lose that focus or get onto something else. Now you're going to have to make the decision as to whether or not you're the type of person that can handle that or not. But I mean, I I've been doing that for years and sometimes it, it can backfire, but it also leads to like levels of, of productivity and focus that are hard to plan. So, you know, that's, that's, I, it, it, I think you have to just kind of know yourself. Okay. So next on my list, I have, you know, so there's a lot of people you mentioned that 30 or 40% of the American uh, workforce can work from home, but how many were prepared to work? From home? Not a lot. Like, I mean, you know, like looking at full scale as an example, right? Like it wasn't a normal thing. Now it was easy for us. Like for our employees all had laptops and stuff like that. It was pretty easy to do, but there are other companies where it's like people didn't have laptops. They didn't have the right security access. You know, they had certain paperwork at their office or files they needed access to or things like that. That all of a sudden they don't have access to and they're like, oh shit, how do we digitally scan paperwork remotely or like access this stuff remotely or whatever, or security access to this IT thing or that IT thing? Like there was a huge flurry of people moving things to the cloud using like virtual desktops and you know, how do we get people security access remotely, like all that sort of stuff. That some companies, like bigger companies, have those problems. Maybe littler companies are a little more lax on those things, but there was a huge flurry of that stuff getting getting people able to work remotely. Apple had a big problem with that. Um, really? Just, well, yeah, they did because there was yeah, IP, intellectual property concerns. You know, and just mentioning that that general uh, nature of security or different things. So, you know, if you're in a situation where you are working from home or your employer wants you to work from home, you need to define and ask for the things that you want or need. Well, a lot of and, companies probably had to throw security out the window. They're like, look, come Monday, we have 40,000 people. None of them work, literally none of them, unless you tell us that this security policy doesn't matter. Yeah. And that was the reality of it. And, you know, and that's a hard part. We've talked about that with contingency planning and different stuff. You know, I mentioned that when I was in the Philippines at the full scale office, and once again, if you want to check it out, what we do, go to fullscale.io. We help you build software teams quickly and affordably, but I, we didn't have a viral contagion plan. And, you know, like all these different things that, and, and still trying to wrap our arms around getting that stuff defined. Now, in our case, you know, Matt mentioned that it was an easy transition because we had 100% of our workforce had a laptop and had headsets, had everything, but there was one thing that not everybody had. Good fast internet. Bandwidth. Yeah. 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 So that was like, that's, that was a whole different thing. And, you know, that's obviously a key component. Now I've read a lot of articles that, that, well, the internet infrastructure is a little challenged because, um, the companies like, you know, AT&T or Time Warner, whoever's providing your, your ISP, um, they, they treat businesses different than they treat residents. So there are businesses that require that 99.99% uptime, but they don't hold residential to that same standard. So in some cases, and I even had to go through this here, uh, I had to basically realign my whole network at home. I had to do a lot of different stuff. I didn't, I didn't realize like we were trying to record the podcast at some point, we were getting kicked out of the room. A couple times, I fi- it took me a while to figure out why that occurred, and that's because my coworkers were connecting everything to the same router that mm-hmm. I was on, and uh, your basic home router isn't used to having a dozen things connected to it and possibly streaming things all at once. Well, we we think that most Americans have magical internet, and maybe you know, good internet is is a problem more like in the Philippines or some other place, right? But, you know, even the United States, like at, at Stackify, we had a couple of employees that didn't have great home internet Yeah, in Kansas City because they didn't yeah, really need it. It wasn't a big deal. Um, right. But you also, you're talking about, um, we also have like across the world, like hundreds of millions, billions of people now that are under lockdown. Well, a lot of people are streaming Netflix and, and all this stuff, Yeah, right? that's the point, yeah. And and the, they've actually come out, I don't know if you saw this, but like Netflix and YouTube are like limiting HD video streams because like the EU government asked them to because of bandwidth problems. 
Zoom did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Zoom actually, uh, because so many people all of a sudden, I I can only imagine what it's been like at the Zoom headquarters. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, you know, you went, you look at certain things like they went from, I don't even know what the numbers are, but their usership 10x and did it like rapidly. And, you know, you mentioned that, that were we prepared for this at home? Now, look, if don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask if there's something that you might need, like you're not, you know, you're going to have to get that figured out. And one of the things that I, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I want to work from home. Okay. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Do you have a space? Do you have, what is your plan? And if you work around me enough, you'll hear me say that pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Like you want to do something. All right, all right, cool. Well, what's your plan? Um, what do you mean? What's your fucking plan? Do you have a plan? Like, have you thought about what you want to do? Like you, and, and that's, that's one of the things and what, where I've really tried to empathize with our employees in the Philippines is a lot of them live in a different type of building than I live in, you know, meaning they're, you know, and some of our employees actually, you know, well, just, uh, condos and, oh man, if I was if I was in quarantine in the condo that I stayed in last time I went to Cebu City to visit the full scale office, I probably would have gone crazy. Would you? Yes, I would have went crazy. I mean, it just it was a space thing. So now with that, it, when I say define or ask for your needs, uh, it could be some. It could be a headset. Could be sometimes maybe a light. You know, like you're wherever you're at and you're on these zoom calls and you're like, God, it looks dark. It looks ugly. I mean, some of these things are just about having, putting a little bit of thought behind your own presentation. I actually did a, a phone call with our operations manager today in Cebu who had a nice beach background yes. on zoom. And <laughs> you know, th- that's so, but you know, with that there's, and we chuckle. So I'm going to roll that right into my next point. Yeah. You know, it's time to be positive. It's time to be positive about stuff. You know, we Which are is hard. regardless. It, 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 well, it, it's not. It 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 can be, but really, theoretically, it's not because you decide to be positive or not. It's a zero or a one. It's well, a yes or a no. It, it, I mean, that comes back to one of the biggest problems we have right now is a manager in a company. We have to be positive because a lot of our employees are struggling. Like they're struggling, yeah, yeah. big time. And, you know, and, and when I say this, this is something that, and I've tried to avoid this on all, all of the things going forward, even though we actually broke this rule before we hit record today. And it's not starting the call or the video by going down a laundry list of all the things that suck right now. You know, set, set the tone, set the pace. And if you get on every single call and that, and that's the thing is, is we're all doing that. Oh man, how are things going? Oh, they're pretty shitty. It's, you know, it's, I'm going crazy. Things suck. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But we also bad, need bad, an, bad, 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 but we also need an outlet for that too. I, mean, I we, get it. But, we need an outlet but, if you, but if you do 12 calls a day and they all start like, that, no, yes. Yeah. 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 So, and if anything, save it for the end. Yeah. Because the thing is, is, is you're setting, you set the tone for every call. Now you mentioned earlier, the salesperson that, that might not be selling stuff or might be having a hard time selling stuff. If that, if that guy or gal is starting every single call with a bunch of negative bullshit, they're not setting the right tone. Now, I mean, I think the thing is, is, is we're all in the same boat. We're all affected, although it might be different, but you know, as much as that outlet is needed, I mean, you can throw a turd in the punch bowl pretty quickly, especially if you're in a, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think that the, be, the being positive thing is just good regardless of whether you're working from home or not. Um, I, I'm curious about how many people have that have wanted to work from home for a very long time are now questioning whether they well, wanted that. Or- I mean, yes, but also now is different. So for example, I know somebody who's working from home, but his wife is also working from home and his teenager is doing homeschooling and they are all sitting in the same room. Yeah. It's yeah. terrible. 
Now, if, if it well, was work, only, working from home with my kids in school would be different. Yeah. I mean, him only working from home might be great. He might be awesome for him. But because of the circumstances today, it's a struggle. He's like, yeah. I, you know, I got to deal with my damn wife all day. Like, I love her, but I don't want to be locked in a room with her all day. Right. <laughs> and I'm listening to her do her own damn video conference meetings all day while I'm trying to work and focus. I it's saw, uh, um, I, I read an article that um, a lot of people's secrets are being exposed right now. Well, a lot of people are learning things about their spouses they didn't know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Weird stuff. Yeah. Like, he's yeah, the weird like asshole lot- that's always on the calls that I hate. And I didn't know my husband was like that. <laughs> or, or uh, there's been a lot of like dubious stuff. Like, people have realized they, they come to find, they've discovered uh, affairs. And uh-huh. sex addictions and weird shit like that. Like, why are you in the? Why are you locked in the bathroom with your laptop for an hour? Oh, you know, boy. it's just weird stuff. So, okay, so here's here's the the and the last thing I've really got on my list here. How about looking for training? Looking for looking for looking for learning, trying to sharpen your tools. Um, you know, the, one of the things that we often do well in an office environment is get, well, it's either hands-on training. We learn things from other people, whether it be a manager, a mentor, or just something we pick up during, during the day. Um, that is something that can be painfully absent in a work from home environment. On the flip side, there's about a million things out there right now that are on discount, extended Mm -hmm. free trial, different options. There's a world of training and knowledge and wisdom. Now, at the beginning of the episode, I I mentioned that without a commute, it would give you even more time to catch up with things like Startup Hustle. Well, I'd like to think that people that are regular listeners of the show often learn something from us or our guests or whatever occurs during the show. And if if you're not taking that in... Hold on a second. You're saying instead of watching tiger king i should be learning something yes yes or you could be no i'm saying you could be could could i didn't say should i'm not mad i'm not gonna you're you're a you're a grown-ass man all right all right i love it when people say that all right fine 15 minutes a week i'll learn something the rest of the time i'm gonna watch netflix and chill That'll be an that'll be an improvement yes. over the the prior standard of eight minutes. So <laughs> you're you're getting up there, but but no, that's the thing is and now especially if you're in a leader. Okay, if you're in a leadership role or you have people in your company that you're quote grooming for whatever you know, like these are your future leaders, whatever. Uh, those those people are at those those folks are at work learning from you others. I don't know, like I, you know, and that's one of the things that we've talked about at full scale is, is even though most of our developers are in a senior level of experience, the ones that we have that aren't are there because they want to learn from those people. And I think that that makes it, uh, it makes it a lot more difficult. So, you know, we mentioned asking or defining what some of your needs might be. Well, you can either seek that training and, and wisdom yourself, and it also might not be the worst time to suggest to your employer that some of those things become accessible. Well, I, I think to me, this brings up the most important tip of all of working uh, a remote. It? it has to do with communication. Yeah. When, when people are all in uh, an office together, it's easy to communicate and for those who normally do that, but then have a couple remote employees, you probably re- you probably know and realize like those couple remote employees never get the same amount of communication. They're always like forgot about. This has actually helped all of us improve our communication because it has to. Because you know, before when Tony made a weird grunt, I knew what that meant. I'm not sitting by Tony anymore. So I had to retrain Tony that instead of grunting, he needs to send me a Slack message that something's not working the right way. But then he sends that Slack message to everybody, right? And all in all, we have to communicate so much better when everybody's working remotely 
And it's forcing us to do it and retraining us where when we all work in a little office together, we really don't communicate very well. And you can't work with remote people because they never get that same communication that the people in the office got. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, we've talked about over communication. We've talked about stressful communication. We've talked about communication fatigue, but with that, you got to just kind of evolve your practices. And you mentioned, you know, you get to know that there's an issue because Tony grunts or makes some sounds. So the, you know, you have, like I said, define that, you know, say, Hey, I need you to do this or to do that. I think there's a whole world of things that people are, are figuring out. You know, you also mentioned, uh, you know, Slack, and I don't think we got into that. Um, I, there's a lot of really adequate and powerful communication tools out there that I think a lot of people take for granted or don't consider that not everybody uses that. You're seeing a rebirth and a birth of a lot of tools like Facebook has a, has a, uh, has a Zoom competitor out. Google's reviving their stuff. Yep. Like there's a whole lot of different stuff out there. So figure out exactly what it is that works for you and get after doing it. Well, Matt, I think we're about out of time. And, you know, once again, today's episode of Startup Hustle was brought to you by Fullscale.io, helping you build software teams quickly and affordably. I'm going to get back to working from home. How about you? You know, it's lunchtime. See you next time. See ya.